We're just going to roll in again, people, because the Unlaced podcast, we've had a big year and <laughs> <laughs> no laughing year, Kelsey. But the last episode with Chris Terzieski was pretty inspirational. Obviously, he grew up in the mean streets of Craigieburn, came up to the youth centre there and um, has come out you know, an Australian champion as a heavyweight boxer. So there's a lot of diamonds in that episode if anyone hasn't seen it. Now, today is, you heard the laughing larrikin in the background, the incredibly talented Collingwood netballer, Kelsey Brown. Thank you for coming on the show, the podcast. No worries. <laughs> Why am I already giggling? I don't know. This is a problem. You have a giggling issue. Yeah, I do. do. Uh, that's probably my biggest downfall. Yeah. I should put it on my hinge profile. <laughs> We're going to talk about hinge. Oh, she's already dropped the word H. That's what we love. Um, but yeah, what's what's been happening with you? I was like, have you done a podcast before? Uh, I've done like podcasts over the phone, but never face to face. Yeah, we're going to struggle because like we're lot. obviously friends and we catch up a lot and, um, well, not a lot, but we catch up and and you're always laughing. Like there's always a laughing kind of. Aspect I did to this. say that that I'm going to have to be careful because we're not sitting out for dinner having a friendly chat. Yeah, we're which actually is here to talk problematic, about. right? So <laughs> let's see how far we go. Don't worry, I've been in this situation many times with obviously close friends, like mutuals that we know that have been on here, and it's. We've, we've got through it. So yeah. we should get, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. I'm ready. Just talking about Collingwood Netball, like obviously we know the Collingwood AFL, they're huge. They've got incredible facilities. Everyone kind of has a chip against them. They want to beat them. You guys obviously share the facilities, which I assume is a, a really big luxury to have um, in the netball scene. But also is that kind of the same view on you girls as it is on the AFL team? Like everyone kind of despises Collingwood. They want to beat them. Oh, yeah. 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 So when I came to Collingwood, I'd come from a club that had won like back-to-back premierships and they were from the Sunshine Coast. And I felt like we were like the princesses of netball and everyone was like loved us. And I came to Collingwood and honestly like instant hatred like I could not believe how quickly people's perception of you as a player changed just because of what colours you wore. And I feel like we really took on the identity of like hated by all. Um, right. So it definitely is a thing that's gone across the codes. <laughs> it was crazy. It was the weird. And I don't think I handled it very well at the start because I was like, <laughs> I'm like, I like being supported. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was like this sort of opinion that, yeah, it was just easy to hate Collingwood and you just wanted to beat them. And I feel like every single time we played against a team, they'd find another level against yeah. us. Um, but, yeah, the... Being a part of that club and like around the boys um, and the AFLW girls and with the facilities that we've got, I mean, I'd be hated every day of it's, the week yeah, if I got to do that every yeah, day. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Like I've seen, I, I used to be in those facilities with the VIS and it's obviously changed now. But oh, no way. I was in the VIS back really? then. Yeah. Oh, I was in there in like 2008. <laughs> Was, um, I don't know. I don't yeah, know when I was puppy. there, but back when it was like yeah, the VIS. Yeah, 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 Alexis 100%. Center. Yeah, I was telling this to um, people the other day. I'm like, man, I used to walk in there. I was like, me and Leon Davis were the only black people in there. Like, <laughs> hey, brothers, we're just looking at each other. Never spoke a word. Just like, what's going on, brother? <laughs> yeah, so you're you there soccer. soccer? Yeah, I was there for yeah, yeah, right. soccer. So we used to use the gym facilities. Yeah. But then so obviously sometimes Collingwood were training. I think Vixens were around back then too. Yeah, so I would have been in just sort of like the development program for because right. um, Vixens were – associated with the VAS. It's unbelievable. The yeah. Facilities. So you guys just do gym there? No, like, so we've got the court. So where oh, the old, courts there, yeah, right. so they've covered in, it's like heritage list, listed, I'm pretty sure, and they've covered in the old Olympic pool and they've put a netball court over the top of That's it. That's amazing. So the boys sometimes use it for like, I don't even know what they do on there, but I'm like, get off. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. No, they do like strategy and stuff on there, but then we do our full training. So all of our stuff and our training is at the same facility. Before we go into a bit more about Nepal, I do want to talk about how we met because oh, the, irony, <laughs> the irony of this story is one of the funniest things. I, I don't know how long we'd known each other. When do you reckon we did first run into each other? I have no idea. 2017, 2018? No, nah, it would have been the it? end of 2018. I moved there end of 2018. Right. So yeah. ladies and gentlemen, obviously... When I moved back to Melbourne after my soccer days, I actually moved back in with my parents that, that you know, they lived in a lovely apartment. Apartment? We, Come yeah, on. Oh, it's an apartment. It's, it's an the apartment. penthouse. No, it's not a penthouse. <laughs> well, it's a top It's a top floor. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, it's, a, it's great. It's a good, I mean, for, for parties and so forth. <laughs> Which <laughs> I never in got hand. invited yeah, to. Yeah, I know, you could hear them, I hope. But nonetheless, we. Um, I was coming out of the basement one day and I saw... <laughs> This young lady, Kelsey, <laughs> get out of a car and like could barely walk. And I think you'd just done your ACL. Oh, so this is ACL no time. So that's oh, probably okay. a good so time. 2019. Oh, is it 2019? End of 2019. Yeah. Yeah. So little did we know Kelsey was actually living in the apartment. 
underneath. the same apartment, yeah. literally underneath, uh, underneath your parents' house. Yeah, so that's how we met, yes. fun, funnily enough. Which is I quite, actually met your fa- your parents first, though. Yeah, we have this running elevator. joke that my old man might have hit on you once or twice, which if <laughs> dad, you're think... watching, mate, that's fucked. But <laughs> I don't think that happened. But yeah, yeah, I met your parents first and we talked, we bonded over sport. Yeah. And then, yeah, I met you. Did they, did they tell you that they had a handsome son by any chance or no? They, um, no, they, they left didn't. Me out of they the left that out. All right, so you just assumed. Yeah. No, I didn't assume <laughs> <laughs> no, that you didn't. So you didn't even know that they had a son. No, I had no idea. Oh, that's so random. And then I was introduced to you through a friend. Yes, correct. Yes. That's right. Well, that's pretty crazy. Can we go back to the ACL injury? Because mm-hmm. obviously, highs and lows of sport. We talk about. And we will definitely talk about your highs. Um, but that was a pretty severe injury at the time. I remember, like when I saw you, you were like pretty depleted. Mm. And ACL is not like just your odd injury. Like it's somewhat yeah, life changing in a sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like you, your life changes once it happens. Massively. And I feel like I talk about it now is like one of the biggest, there's two turning points in my life at the moment. And one of them was my ACL. And I hate talking about it like it was, you know, the end of the world. But at the time um, it felt like a, a really big deal. I sort of look back on it and go, I mean, it was just a body part and you can rehab it and it's fine. And I've had a lot of friends go through a lot more traumatic things than that. But mm. um, you kind of have to say those things to yourself in that moment. Well, though. yeah. And it, it, but it's sort of like your career is then sort of on the line. Are you, I think at the time I hadn't signed my contract yet. So I was in contract negotiations. So I was out of contract. Um, and you had just done my knee. So I was sort of like, do I, am I going to have a job? Um, and I'd just come off, uh, like probably the biggest achievement I'd ever done in netball three weeks prior to that. And yeah, it was just massive. So, and as I said, it was the week before finals. So we, oh, yeah, no, I, yeah, it was just, it, everything just sort of changed. I thought I had my next sort of 12 months planned out and then all of a sudden it became, um, okay, you're not doing that anymore. You're just going to rehab a body part, and um, but it taught me a lot about myself. Yeah. But yeah. So what? What like? What would it? What did it teach you in a sense? Because um, it's a pretty lonely period, right? Like it you're, is. You actually, someone analyzed this once. I think it might have been like Luke Darcy in the AFL, but he's like, when you're injured, you actually work harder. Oh, rehab it's is so, so much harder. Because yeah. even when you're sitting still, you're kind of working. Like you can't move your icing, your your legs elevate, all that sort of stuff. Like yeah. your brain's never off. No, and it's a big like mental game. I feel like that's the question I get asked the most is how did you come back mentally after a big injury? And especially with netball, it's such a stop start change. It's a really dynamic Rapid, sport. So yeah. ankles and knees are Is it common? So common, but also I think getting back on court and being able to do what you've done before, it takes a lot of mental strength to sort of be like, okay, I can put 100% of my body load through a change of direction through oh, my left wow. knee. Yeah. yeah. So um, <clears throat> I think it just more taught me that um, there's more to you than netball and yeah. that I had been living, breathing, eating netball and when it got taken away from me, I sort of had to look at what I'd swept under the carpet and been like, okay, what do I have left? And I put a lot more effort into relationships, family, friends, um, and actually feel like I sort of got my life outside of netball back on track. Um, because while you've got your sport, you just end up putting so much energy into that, that you don't think about. Yeah. And you love it and you don't think about anything else until it's taken away from you and you sort of have to go, okay, (laughs) who am I? Um, and so, yeah, that, um, resilience, um, can you be dedicated enough to get back? Um, and my rehab was actually so strange because it happened at the, st- uh, sorry, the last half of my rehab was during COVID. So I actually had no access to anyone. Oh my God. Yeah. I had no access so to physio. Just I was just, just like winging it. Like, <laughs> uh, can I squat today? I'm going to see if I could squat today. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. So it wasn't do ideal. No, it was bad to don't <laughs> yeah, do that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but it was, I was quite alone. I was living, uh, my partner and I at the time had moved back in with my parents. So it was like, it was the weirdest time, yeah. but, um, yeah, still one of the coolest things. I always say like, I'm super grateful for doing my knee. That's, that's fascinating. Hey? Yeah. Well, there's a pro, there's a pro out of a pretty tough period. I yeah. Guess. That's amazing. It's the best. It, I needed that at that period of time. And I also said with my mental health, where it was at that time, we'd just lost a world cup. I'd gone through some like 
media stuff where my name was in the media a lot around a discussion that had happened with a coach. Like I was Mm. all over the media during those three weeks. And I remember saying to someone like, if a body part doesn't go, I reckon my brain, I'm going to, I'm going to snap. Yeah. Or I'm going to, yeah. And my, it happened. So I think people talk about it all the time that they sort of know based on their mental space. I've heard Joe Ingalls talk about it, um, that he sort of knew he was so stressed and his, his head wasn't where his body was. And that sort of, that's why the injuries happen. And Mm. I feel like when you can look back on it, I could definitely say like my head wasn't in the right spot. Yeah. So that's that's pretty crazy. How do you go with the like, um, netball life balance? Cause you obviously touched on it there that it was probably not the best pre ACL. Yeah. And you had that obviously learning of trying to invest more time into that space. How are you that? Cause I find that's a common problem with all athletes, right? Yeah. I still struggle with it. I still would rather do netball all the time than, um, invest in other things, but I know that I'm a way better player when I've got a bit more of a holistic approach to my week. Um, and when I'm, you know, playing music or writing or, um, like working, then I actually feel a lot better. So, Um, I think I'm getting better. I don't think you ever clock it though. Like I don't think you ever get good no, at you don't. life, work-life balance. And you also family. kind of like get told off for it in the, not in like a direct way, but like people kind of think they take your, um, I guess, well-diverse living approach to life as like you're not focused on a oh, career. Oh, 100%. Morgan Mitchell spoke about it on here. She's doing brand partnerships with everyone. Mm. And then like she still trains for athletics as much as she wants yeah. because she exposes that more on her social media, like you're not working hard. Yeah, and, oh, it's like, well, what and she I? would get judged. And, and she yeah. doesn't like, you know, athletes, they don't get paid a huge amount, right? So if they don't, or I should say You've got to say yes to the opportunities. Yeah, yeah. correct. Yeah. So it's a double-edged sword, but um, – one of the interesting things, which I didn't know about you until like doing some research and obviously we spoke, but I didn't actually know you had um, a famous father or an AFL footballer <laughs> as a dad. Yeah. Yeah. So can you speak to us about that? Because he played obviously, I think before you were born, before your time. Yeah. 74 to 79. I'm pretty sure it was. Um, I had, so him and his brother, Mark Brown and Ricky Brown, they were in the VFL for Geelong. And um, I think I was like, I don't know, six to like 10 games off father son. So if I had been a boy, I would have been ropeable. Like, dad, are you serious? <laughs> oh, no. Are you serious? You could have been a cattery, the um, John institution. So yeah, he, like my family is so sporty. My mum grew up playing netball and um, I think before she had kids, um, her biggest thing was like going to dad's footy and yeah, we were always such a big sporting family. Um, but yeah, one of my favourite like mementos that I've got is his playing card. No um, yeah. And I bought it for $5 on eBay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's like his playing card and he's like, I don't know how old he would have been, but it's, it's pretty cool. That's great. Yeah. Have you, has your head ever wondered to go over to AFLW? Like when it sort of started out because of, um, do you I, think you could do it if you wanted to? I don't know whether my body would be cut out for yeah, it. True. I mean, I, I'm, my style of play is a lot more like short, sharp efforts on a court, on a hard court. So I don't know how I would go running long distances, but yeah. I feel like, I don't know. I would love to do. I also can't kick or catch, so catch, <laughs> okay. Well, catch, that's so a probably a be, bit, it would probably be an issue. Downfall, <laughs> I would say. It. Um, but yeah, I had thought about it. I feel like it would be super fun, but yeah, I don't know whether I'd be good. Yeah. Well, you obviously grew up with a sister, an older mm-hmm. sister, Maddie Brown, who's mm-hmm. a very renowned netball. Now she's doing. Is she doing commentary or she's doing? Yeah, like broadcasting she's in the commentary. Such, yeah, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So um, cool. But can you tell me like what it was like growing up with her? Because she would have been older. You guys, I'm sure, would have been button heads all the time over oh, sport. Oh my gosh, all the time we had fight we were close but yeah. we had a lot of fights yeah because you told me she broke a collarbone or something she once did as a kid, she which is did. Fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah there was like no mercy in our household um that there's so many stories <laughs> i remember one time i think she stole some clothes i kicked her and she ended up with like a cut on her like she still got it um this other time we were playing <laughs> one-on-one basketball in the backyard and mum was like okay one more scrimmage like one more go Mum was like, Maddie was like, next goal win. So both of us have gone like ham. She's also four years older than me. So at this time, like bigger. bigger. And just like I was driving in and she rejected me, like fell on the ground, broke my collarbone. Um, (laughs) But yeah, it was just competitive. And I sort of talk about it now. I don't think I would be as tough or as um, resilient as I am now if it wasn't for my upbringing. And mum and dad were brutal too. Like if we played a bad game of sport, you like didn't want to go home. Tell with me what, dad. Yeah, what was yeah? What was your dad's vibe like? Dad would be bad, like bad game in Nepal. You think I'm paying money for you? <laughs> oh, that's the best <laughs> killer first line. For you <laughs> to put that out there. Um, and I think he, we laugh about it now. At the time, it was. 
traumatizing. Um, but I also knew that if I'd played a good game, he'd he'd tell me. So it was kind of like if you got a compliment, you knew, you knew you'd done well. Yeah, yeah and fine. worth it. And um, so he was honest. Yeah, in a sense. so honest. Maybe too honest at times. Sometimes. And as we started to get older and move into sort of like um, high grade teams, we had to go to Melbourne sort of every Wednesday night. And so a trip from from Melbourne to Geelong is an hour and ten minutes. Yeah, so you'd want to from see the a bit of performance, right? Honestly, it was like the longest hour and ten minutes home. If I hadn't, if I hadn't performed, it would sit in silence. I reckon till about Altona, and then he'd start the roast. <laughs> That's the word like, just simmering. And I would be like, "When is this going to end?" That's um, so fucked that you know the <laughs> suburb where it would start. Like Laver- Laverton McDonald's. Um, <laughs> That's even worse. So funny. So, but we ha- are like so close as a family, so yeah. it hasn't you know, our relationship is so strong. And as I said, it kind of built us up into be quite tough little yeah, it um, does. humans. <laughs> Do you know what? I, th- I find that interesting because I reckon um, as humorous as it is, that would have been tough growing up having mm. sort of that uh, correspondence with your father and you don't do well. But I reckon now in your head, you're like, you'd be such an effort person because of it. I like am, you would never leave anything un- un- because of that. Ask any of my teammates. Yeah. I'm actually a psycho. Yeah, that's, um, what, but that's what it would it built into you. It did. And I sort of talked to, I mean, he in my older age was sort of like, I'm really sorry if that. <laughs> <laughs> and Maddie and I said, no, honestly, it's taught me work ethic, um, working harder for your performance or so many things. Um, and I do often notice in myself now, now that I'm an older sort of senior player and in a bit more of like a leadership position mm. that I kind of lead that way too. Like I'm very much right. like not good enough, like be better. You say you're, you're dad. I'm brutal. Yeah. <laughs> and I say, I think my teammates would say that as well, I, but I think I'm better now at creating relationships with them so that you're able to have those conversations. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit hard. Right. But yeah, it's a bit hard when you're not building strong connections with people and then you're trying to be like, can your effort be better? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know how to be anything else because that's what I grew up as. And yeah. the minute I try and be a different sort of player or leader to that, I'm, I'm really um, not authentic. So uh, that's how I lead now and I've put it down to pretty much – Dad. <laughs> Can I ask you actually, I want to ask you an interesting question just around leadership. So, because I always ask this, I always find there's a couple type of captains. There's ones that maybe might be a little less more silent, but they are very loud with their actions on the field, like mm-hmm. their influence, mm-hmm. they're inspiring and you're like, okay. And then you get some that it's like communication heavy, chat, chat, organize the change and keep everyone together on the field, loud. They're, they're good players, but they're, you know, they're not the star potentially yeah. or whatever. For you as a player, what sort of leader did you prefer playing under? Like what do you value more? Playing under definitely the latter, so the second one, the so the one, the communicator, um, right. because I like to know where I stand with someone and I like to talk things through, like the way I deal with conflict or anything in my life yeah. is like we need to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And that's just how I've always been. I think in a professional environment, that's probably more important. Yeah. It? Because yeah. It is quite tense all the time. All the time. And you do need someone who's going to bring, there's so many different personalities in a team. Um, and not all of them are going to be firing at once. There's going to be days that I am flat or somebody else is flat and you need someone to be able to be like, okay, and wrap you up in a big hug and <clears throat> right. at the whole team and sort of be like, hey, this is where we're at, but this is where we need to be. Okay. Um, and we've got leaders like that at the moment at Collingwood. Ah, up the pies, eh? Up the pies. Well, when we talk about netball, because netball obviously for people that aren't fully aware of the professional league here in Australia or have watched many games, Probably doesn't get the credibility that it deserves because it is like violently quick. <laughs> yeah. Like it is very quick pace. We get that and, all the time. And it's also like as much as Nepal cops criticism for its lack of um say physicality, that's it, it's very physical at the hop, top level. Absolutely. Like there's rules in place because it's skill based, which I prefer those games. Mm. Like soccer's the exact same. Mm-hmm. If you put too much force in someone's a foul. Mm-hmm. So it's skill based. But um can you explain like at what it's like on the on the court at that level? Because it is, as I said, it's really quick. It's yeah. quick pace. Decision making is quick. You've got girls running into you. Uh, obviously, yeah, it's yeah, crazy. It's, yeah, it's, it's and I feel like we get this all the time. And people watch on TV and they're sort of like, "Oh, it's great." Then they come to a game and they're like, "Holy shit! What happens off the ball is like mental." So you might see what you see happening around the play, but it's sort of like you're getting heat all the time off the ball or you're getting Mm. people knock you or 
Um, yeah, there's stuff that happens off the ball all the time that I think you only get to see when you come and experience a live game. And we get so many people converted um, to netball just by coming. Or you always tell me that, like, mm. you know, you need to come watch you a game to, to understand. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, what do you mean? Yes. Um, and the coolest thing I feel like in the last few years, <clears> and I mean, I've, this is, I think my eighth or ninth, like professional year. So I've been through the whole, like getting paid next to nothing in my first year to, um, you know, Getting being like fully pro- salary, fully right? professional athlete yeah. now, um, which is cool to have been. That's an eight year process, um, and the coolest thing about that is that now we're fully professional. You're putting more time in the gym, and so you're getting physically stronger. So the game's getting faster and harder and more physical. And like you said, the skill off the ball, especially defensively, to be able to like put enough pressure on and be physically a presence for your attacker, but then also not get pulled for a penalty. It's, it's, it's crazy. Tough, yeah. Right? It's like I there is angles. The yeah. There's like, there's so much technical ability to it that I think people don't understand. And the coolest thing as well is we've had um, Jordan Roughhead come in and sort of sit into our previews and reviews and our training sessions. And even him having been in AFL is sort of like, you guys wow, like there is so much technical stuff that happens within this sport that just the average punter wouldn't know about yeah. unless you're either in the four walls or actually in the netball space. Yeah. Um, and that as well is we've got this really cool netball fan base that understand it. So I think once you get the game and the concept of how difficult some skills actually are, mm. you really appreciate the game. Absolutely. Now you mentioned actually there, because I wanted to speak about that, the professional journey you've had more so from like a netball as a sport, like how it's grown, particularly when you came into it, because now it's probably more enticing for females to want to be a netballer because they can make a decent salary and they can live off it. Mm. What was that like in the early days when you were getting sort of not next to no money, but you know, to live and survive off it would have been challenging. Well, I was sort of like a late bloomer, you would almost say, where I didn't get my first contract until I was 23. So, okay. um, my sister, on the other hand, got her first contract at 18. So oh, rivalry. Oh, ruined. <laughs> but I was getting to a point where I wasn't getting paid. I was essentially paying to play all the way up until 23, oh, yeah. um, until I got my first contract. And you sort of get to a point where you're like, okay, well, like, do I have to be, I, I probably have to go and like be an adult now and not continue to pursue my dream of being a netballer, um, you know, putting time and effort into uni or into work or trying to, um, you know, do I get an entry level job and try and climb up the corporate ladder? Like you're actually faced, I was definitely faced with that. You're 23. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. It's a, it's a like bold move at 23, 24 to still be going for a professional Still be going. Honestly. And I think at the time I just, I think I knew what I had to offer and I just needed somebody else to see it. And I mean, I had amazing support from my family who were like, well, go for as long as you want. But it was definitely getting to a point where it was like, well, you're 23 now. Yeah, like, yeah. You're not that good, straight uh, up. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe give up. Um, and then I got my break. Credit but, to you, man. Because look at you. Let's fast forward eight years. Leadership group, Collingwood playing finals. Uh, um, a world cup medalist like yeah what's going on here happened. which i haven't even reeled off your credentials but don't worry i'll build into that for you. <laughs> but that's like that's how quick things can sort of change and yeah. like my entry into ssm was crazy i actually love telling this story because it was i was a training partner so you get paid nothing um right. what was it ss ssn is super um, oh, okay. super the, netball yeah, sorry right. that's the league, the, the league name yeah the acronym and um i was a training a great partner name, by the way super netball yeah super netball I can imagine oh super yeah netball. Um, and Madison, my older sister was like the starting wing attack for Vic Sands. I was a training partner and I'm watching them play as a training partner, just going like, oh, good job guys. And they're over in Perth and she did her knee and I'm watching on the TV called my mom being like, oh my God, like in tears, like, oh my God. But then also going, is this. Am I going to get a call up? <laughs> Honestly, no. I don't know if that's fucked or amazing. So, so fucked. <laughs> the fact that your 5% of your brain space is even gone there but shows me like, how competitive you are. Oh, and we are as sisters. But the coolest thing was she called me straight away. She's like just done her knee and she was like shattered. And she's like, this is it. This is it, doll. You're up. 
Oh, what a sis. Yeah, That's mad she's her. amazing. And That's so, mad. yeah, then I got the phone call and pretty much since then I was like a re- injury replacement player for Vixens and that's how I got my the start to my wow. career, literally at the hands of my sister's injury. That is that is crazy. Is I didn't that know cra- that. <laughs> that. I didn't know that. That's the craziest You guys like live together now. And we like, live together. Oh, we're what fine. What the fuck is going and, on? And, you know, like she was the first person. So um, literally the next week we were playing in Melbourne and I got the call from the coach being like, well, I guess you're in. Oh, a um, and I was, yeah, I was like, oh, okay. Um, and Maddie was there at halftime. She's like, right, you're going on. The coach was like, you're going on. And Maddie's come up to me and she's like, this is what you need to do. And like telling me. And she was like the most supportive sister ever. So um, I think that's like our relationship is, is so unique. tight. Yeah. Well, imagine spare a thought for your parents in that moment. It's like heartbreak yet triumph. They were life. honestly like, it was what bittersweet. The fuck yeah. You? What the fuck <laughs> you like, do? You just be like, <laughs> one daughter's like shattered and the other yeah. one's like, yes. Like, so you've both done ACLs. <clears throat> yeah. So Maddie's done two and I've done one. My dad's done two. My mum's done two. So it's a family. It's hereditary. So it's hereditary. <laughs> when I did mine, the um, doctor was like, well, we're kind of just waiting for it, weren't we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so bold. <laughs> he, were like, he was like, I've just done my knee. And he was like, well, you were a ticking time bomb. So. <laughs> yeah. You were bound to be there. In fact, we had the bed ready. <laughs> so, <laughs> it yeah. took your time. Fucking hell, that's Crazy. mental. Now, you obviously started out the Vixens, which is the Vixens like, and this might be a bit salty for you to say, but are they the biggest team in, in the league? Is it Collingwood? Um, like, they're probably the most, well, they're definitely. Because they've been around for a while, Vixens. Right? Yeah, and they have a really great um, success, number one, and two, like culture and grassroots um pathway into Vixens. So right. the Netball Victoria pathway leads you sort of into Vixens at the moment. So ah, any okay. young girl playing, you know, f- out in Wheelers Hill or whatever is pretty much aiming to enter a pathway that leads you to Vixens. Right. Um, so that's why when Collingwood comes in and just like Punches buys themselves you. a team at SSN, you can see why the There's rivalry. Rift. Yeah. Um, and so Collingwood, I think the coolest thing that we've done is sort of start to create a bit more of a pathway underneath Collingwood now. So now as a Victorian young netballer, you can go into either, which is awesome. That's amazing. You know what? I think probably being a male as well, I'm I'm a little bit naive to like how many girls play netball. It's the most participated sport. Like it's like, you know, when you're a kid or when you're like a young young kid growing up, it's either as a male you play footy, cricket or soccer or as a girl you're probably playing netball. Like, that's it. That's like the first choice, right? It, I think it used to be netball or basketball and soccer. as well, maybe. Yeah, soccer too. Soccer, soccer is very popular. Yeah. yeah, for girls. And um, but then obviously now AFLW has come in and true. cricket with the um WVL. Yeah, true, true. Um, so there's a lot more, which is so good for yeah. young girls. And I often get we often get asked the question like, do you feel threatened? You know, does netball feel threatened about these other sports? Like, no. The more opportunities for kids, the better. Yeah, correct. And women in sport, that's amazing. And I feel like netball just continues to keep pushing what they want, what product they want to put out there and signing the likes of, you know, KO and Foxtel as their broadcast. Right. Yeah. So I don't think there's a, um, not that there's not a threat. I just don't think that netball sort of buying into that. They're just sort of on their own path of what they want to do. That's good. So you're yeah. like idolized by like all these young girls. So they just like, like oh my God, it's cool. Well, Sometimes. look, I'm going to go, I'm going to go into this actually, because we went on a, every now and now, for those that follow the Unlaced podcast, like very closely, you'll know that I, I venture onto TikTok live every now and then, <laughs> which is an absolute fiasco in itself, that platform. I, I don't it recommend is. it for the faint hearted because <laughs> some weird shit goes on there. But obviously when you go live on TikTok, you can actually connect and go live with with other people they can be like randoms and you have discussions and like they have people on their live chatting and you're talking you can battle people pay you for like just being there and they give you gifts and the more gifts you get you win it's fucked, <laughs> which right? i didn't know about this until which i don't actually like that aspect i just like going live talking to people <laughs> i don't want people to like you send taught me, me this yeah i did <laughs> a- anyway kelsey and i went on a live and like to go on a live like some people get like hundreds of people and which is like a lot and like I go on, sometimes I have like 20, 25, which I think is fucking a lot. And then I'm like to you, I'm like, hey, how many like um people are in your life? I don't know. I think got like 80. <laughs> I'm like 80 people you were on for like five minutes, never been on live. And then I had all these like young girls coming over to my chat and like having a dig at me because I said Jay, something wrong about off. netball yeah. or like had a dig at you. And I'm like, holy fuck, who has got like a fan base here, like a cult? Yeah, well, netball, like honestly, the netball fan base is like, 
so passionate. I think that's one of the coolest things about netball is like how passionate their fan base is. Yeah. Like they will rip you to shreds via Facebook if you come for netball. <laughs> like you saying what you said on the live <laughs> yeah, and I you did. had people being like, are you joking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's this person. Yeah. She's the best in the world. I'm like, I've never seen Which her play. She I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. She's like no, the best look, I said look, I said a comment around the GK position because I was like, for me. Who wants to play GK? <laughs> yeah, well, it's like yeah, in soccer, in soccer, for example, when you're the goal goalkeeper oh. like the goalkeeper we say has always got a, a screw loose because they oh. have to be different to everyone else because they're the ones diving head first on ball <laughs> yeah. they're doing things yeah. that no one else wants to do <laughs> right so i was like i'm always fascinated by keepers because they're always a little bit left field right no it's, it's like not they're the playing same. a different sport but netball is probably different <laughs> <It's> right so <laughs> different. <laughs> yeah so, so when you're like who wants to play goalkeeper and like, like jeeva's yeah. on the live and she was there Which, honestly, i'm so sorry jeeva I honestly, and she's like apologies. the best player in the world, and has been for like yeah, and then, sixteen oh, did years. I cop, I did I, I cop my fair share of hate, so don't worry, I felt it. But um, yeah. What's what's interesting though for you, and I, I always like like in professional journeys when you start, there's always kind of like a point in your career where you're like, okay, now I feel like I belong. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? Because the first few sort of periods of your play or passage, you're kind of like, you're getting used to it. You're like, this is fucking crazy. Mm. Like, what is going on? You're just like happy to be there. Yeah. You're sort of like, oh, And then there's work? a there's like a, a penny drop. Some great players, they don't have that penny drop. They're just from the get-go. But I had yeah. that penny drop where I'm like, okay, maybe I do belong. Yeah. For you, I think it was when you went to Sunshine Coast, yeah. right? Yeah. Can Good you, research. I'm on the ball, <laughs> man. I'm like a center in the ball. <laughs> it's everywhere. No, but can you tell me through why, one, why did you go there? Yeah. And two, what did you get out of that? So definitely a turning point of my career. And at the time I didn't know that it would be, um, but now obviously hindsight's amazing. Um, I went there, ended up winning two premierships with a team that was like back-to-back premierships with a team that was wow. like ridiculous. Like if you look at that team on paper now, sometimes I'm like, oh, how is my name there? <laughs> really? Um, yeah. Can and you reel so, some off? Um, oh, yeah. So Jeeva Mentor was there, oh, Caitlin shit. Bassett, who captained um, the country, Laura Langman, who captained New Zealand and is like Shh. arguably the best centre in the world ever to play the game. Wow. Um, Shout out, Laura. Who else? Laura. <laughs> um, <laughs> who else? Steph Wood, who's now the vice captain of the Diamonds. Mm. Carla Mostert, who's like the vice captain of the South African um Jesus Proteas, Christ. yeah, like that's nice breaching salary cap up there. What's yeah. going on over <laughs> At there? At the time, well, I went for pittance. Um, <laughs> yeah, you just brought it right. Yeah, around. honestly. <laughs> so, and and the head coach at the time. Um, was is now the head coach of the Silver Ferns, so she's about to enter okay. Com Games, and she's an amazing head coach. And so I'd spent two years at Vixens. I'd played like five quarters in my second year, so like. Not no that, time was, at were all. Were you going against your sister or she's still um, out? Yeah, just... so I and I would sort of come on into centre because you're a wing attack, right? Yeah, so for people that don't know, right? I yeah. just kind of like filled any position that they needed if they needed it, and often it would sort of be like we're down by seven or eight. Can you just come on and inject something into this game and see if you can win? And I guess whether I had done my job or not was whether we'd like either won so or hard, that yeah, role. it was just my role at vixens for that year and i honestly knew that that was my role but i think at the time no one really saw me as anything more than that so they're sort of just like well you can inject a bit of pace and like a bit of grit but i don't know whether you're going to be anything more than this yeah we can't rely on you yeah or and and you might only ever be a fringe player here and so when i got the phone call from nolene who at the at the moment is like the Ferns coach and everyone. She's called Auntie Knowles. Um, <laughs> Shout and I, out Auntie yeah, Knowles. Auntie Knowles. <laughs> and I got a phone call from her being like, oh, so I saw you a few years ago um, playing at a preseason tournament in New Zealand, which is probably like my first taste of professional netball. I got to go for Vixens because someone was injured. And she's like, yeah, I saw you playing over here and I really liked you and I'm going to offer you a position for um, a year at the Sunshine Coast. We want you to come and be our starting wing attack. And honestly, at the time I was like, did she had the wrong person. Um, oh my god! That's yeah, life changing. That phone life call. Life changing. I was due to go in for an ankle reconstruction um, in like a week's time, and I remember being like, "Yeah, no, so good. Like, definitely want to come." I <laughs> got off the phone. Got off the phone and was like, "How do I tell her? Like, I'm injured." Oh no! Um, and so then what called, was this like straight away to like play the next week or something? Was no, the next season? year. It oh, was like year, contracting right. period, but right. she sort you of just didn't want to say you're injured because that impacts. No, I didn't want her to be like. Oh, well, never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I ended up making the decision to go and honestly, best two years. It was hard for life 
away from um, netball. I mean, netball was amazing at Sunshine Coast Lightning, but um, I don't know if you've ever been to the Sunshine Coast, but there's I like it's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful, but for retirement, yeah, people. it's not. It's not. A, <laughs> yeah, that's what actually. What was I like living there? Because so hard. I find with the Gold Coast, everyone loves the Gold Coast. But when I lived there playing soccer, I was like. I prefer coming here for holidays. Yeah, and that's that was the thing. I'd come for holidays. Yeah, and it was beautiful. Obviously, the place is amazing, but there is an age gap of people missing. So I feel like people grow up there <laughs> and they go to school. <laughs> they go to school and then they leave at like 20 and they go to Brisbane or they go to Melbourne or Sydney. Yeah. And then they come back at like 40 and have kids. You know what I mean? Jesus. So like 20 to 40, there's no one there. So and I'd moved there at 25. <laughs> well, yeah, I was like. was much talent around for you. Well, I moved with my um, boyfriend at the time. And so that was okay. But um, we split up while I was up there. Right. And I just, I even just friends, like I hadn't met anyone outside of like my team right. who I would be like, yeah, I really vibe with these people. So it was a bit of lonely space. It was well. just, yeah. It helped spaces. you though in a way because uh, that was like your outlet. I was really sense, focused, or? yeah. So yeah. I think because netball was the main thing that I had up there, I was so focused on what I wanted to do. And I also hadn't done anything yet in netball. Like I had no credibility to my name. Yeah, so you had to earn your stripes. A bit. Yeah, I knew that they were the two years that I really needed to invest in my sport and hopefully that would set me up for wherever I went after that. Okay. Um, but I was moving to the Sunshine Coast hoping that I'd be there for five years. And then after two, I was like, I'm so lonely. Really? And that's um, where the Collingwood sort of... Came, yeah, came, came about. So how long's Collingwood's netball team been around for? It's been around for six years. Six years. So, so Lining and Collingwood in... came in at the same time. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. So you've just missed the first two years essentially. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And that's then crazy. been at Collingwood ever since. I never thought that I would be at Collingwood, but the opportunity... Netball is very strange in the sense that there's not a lot of contracts going at the end of years. Mm. So, um, and movement is not really that big. Once you're at a team and if you're performing really well at that team, that team wants to keep there's you. And there's so many positions. 10 on the positions. Court. Yeah. yeah um, on like 10 contracted positions. So, um, there was a space opening up at Collingwood and I didn't want to leave Lightning yet, but I remember being like, if, if I don't take this, this position won't, they'll get someone young and then I'll never be able to come back home. Yeah. So I kind of just had to go. It was a really hard decision though. Wow. You probably think you made the right call. Yeah. Well, I'm happy here. You're, yeah. You're an absolute legend in the game. <laughs> um, for some of the, cause I assume we're going to get some young girls, pr prospective netballers listening into this podcast. Well, now that you've sworn, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <wait. laughs> they knew what they signed up for. Mum and dad, if you let them listen to this, I'm no come at me. Listen, I've done 59 episodes before this, so it's pretty clear. <laughs> um, but what are some like really, like what would you say are key skill sets to be a great netballer? Or doesn't have to all be like physical or. It's uh, funny that you say that because this is like my biggest question and I love this answer because. Because you've played, let's just be real, you've played with the best in the world. With the best with in the world. With and against. Yeah. And I would honestly say hard work is like. <laughs> like Fucking boring. No, <laughs> no. That's so true. So true. Well, I'm not, like I say this all the time, like I'm not the most skillful. I'm, not, I'm definitely not the tallest. <laughs> I wasn't the fastest. Like I honestly and. There's an old coach of mine who said to me, like, when you first started, you were not very good. <laughs> but credit to you that you've worked hard and I've been able to – I feel like I'm the epitome of if you work hard, you can maybe That's do great, something though, with it. Because when you think about it, yeah, well, it's true because, what, 23, you didn't have a contract. No. And so you could have only got really here with hard work. Yeah, and um, I don't want to sell myself. Like, uh, people are going to be listening to this, oh, she must be in a pleb. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, you – you know what? I got actually a funny comment because I was trying to find, like – because I've never really watched you play up close. Like I've seen you on TV mm. play, but like I don't fully understand netball. Yeah. I just know that it moves quick mm. and like I can't pick up the intricacies of like the detail yeah. like I could with soccer, for example. Yeah. So I was trying to find like oh, Kelsey Brown, what's some of her specific like skill sets? Attributes. <laughs> and it was like effort, ruthless, <laughs> grit, determination. I'm like, what the fuck, they're personality traits here. Like are we I'm trying to talk about a netball for fuck's sake. No, that would literally <laughs> be me. So funny. I'm like, that's – I haven't read any of those blurbs that you've yeah, read. Yeah, no, they're deep. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I would honestly say, I mean, height goes a long way in netball, um, but if you don't have it, you've got to have something but else. Because you're, you're not tall. I know, I'm netball, like right? one of the, I'm probably, I think there's myself and another girl that would be like the shortest in the league. 
So wow. I'm 164 centimeters. Wow. Yeah, and yeah, all yeah. of my friends are like 180 yeah. minimum. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think height obviously goes a long way, especially for like particular positions that you might play. But in the mid court, honestly, if you have an engine, you work hard on your fitness. And I had to learn how to like pass both hands. Um, I just had to work really hard on my ball skills. Um, and I think decision making in netball is massive as well. Like yeah, quick thinking, quick thinking, yeah, and being able to make say. a decision um, and sum up like fa- four different players and their defenders and two plays ahead and what might open up. So if only we could assess our own like lives off the court. I <laughs> like, oh, I can't. <laughs> just like chaos, <laughs> bang. <laughs> but on the court, it's like clarity. Yet play it there. <laughs> off the I'm court, it's saying. fucking all over the shop. Me and you. <laughs> so I'm, if one more person describes me as chaos, I'm gonna. I, well, you know what? Because your um your social media names is Dippy Girl, and I've never like understood what that meant. Then I asked you, it's like someone. It's a running joke that you're yeah, not the it was full a chips and dip, yeah. and you've taken that to a new level by actually calling yourself Dippy Girl. <laughs> oh, that was my nickname. That's what you saved in my phone as. Dippy yeah, Dippy Girl. Girl. Yeah. Um, you're. Jakey. I mean, yeah, Jakey, Jakey. Yeah. <laughs> That's fucking absolutely <laughs> yeah. just my name. <laughs> I'll, I'll go back to your Kelsey then. <laughs> fucking hell. Um, no. <laughs> <I'm afraid. laughs> He's just like, oh. We had special names. <laughs> <laughs> oh, trust me, man. I've seen some of the names in her phone. I'll take Jakey. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I've, I'm always like known. I've been always known as Dippy Girl just because yeah. I'm not the whole chips and dip. Well, before we go into Dippy Girl off the court, because Dippy Girl off the court, as much as I love you as a netball, I love the Dippy Girl off the court because she's fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah. But you, you, I think we've undersold like how good you are at this game because you're an Australian diamond, which is no easy feat to play for your country. You've medaled at a World Cup, which the World Cup, I assume, is like the biggest competition you can play in as a netballer. Yeah, there's two. So there's obviously Com Games and, and Olympics. The World Cup. Oh, uh, there's uh, no Olympics. There's no Olympics. No, there. so the Olympics is like the World Cup. What? Yeah. Do yeah. you know what? Soccer is kind of the same thing, and I actually think it's better. World Cup is having the your own World Cup, yeah. yeah, because the soccer World Cup. So we have soccer in the Olympics, but it's under twenty three, yeah, because they don't want to devalue the World right. Cup. And the World Cup's like the most viewed thing ever, and that's the 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 World Cup netball World Cup is like it's just this big netball festival, and it's just netball, and it's focus, netball yeah, which is why it's better. When we played, this is still the coolest thing that happened. I honestly felt like One Direction or like the Beatles. We were playing in Liverpool and we'd walk out of the hotel for the finals and there would be like barricades and like fans, like thousands of people. That's amazing. And I was honestly like, because I'm always like, this is hilarious. Like (laughs) if you knew me, you wouldn't be standing here. (laughs) Like why why are you here? Um, Oh, shit. But, yeah, it was like honestly like fandom. And that's the coolest thing I think about World Cup. I've never done a Com Games, so I can't comment what that's like. But the World Cup was like, it was just netball. And if you were a netballer at the World Cup, lauded. Do you remember like given what was it, 2018? 19, yeah. 2019? Yeah. Did everything you remember like really vivid, really clear? So clear. So clear. It's amazing, right? Yeah. It's yeah. still the coolest thing I've ever done in my sporting career, like to this day. Yeah, it probably won't top it, like unless you go back to it. No, right. yeah. yeah, and um, and I mean that's always the aim is to course. try and get back to um a major tournament, but yeah, it. I honestly remember it was three weeks and it was just netball and I was so I loved it and oh yeah. It was a experience. bit of a heart, like as much as it would have been a great experience, it was a bit of a heartbreak experience too. Because didn't oh, you, you I cried just for like lost, three weeks. Right? We lost by a goal. You lost by a goal. Final. Yeah, which. And it's on final. YouTube. Like if you Google Oz versus New Zealand World Cup, like the whole game, <laughs> and don't get me wrong, like I've gone back and watched it a few times. <laughs> <laughs> and it is grim. Really? Oh, it's so sad. Oh, talk um, me through the feeling afterwards. What was, where was your head? I was just shattered. Like, like shattered, didn't really believe what had happened, what had happened. And you spend the whole lead up picturing you standing on the number one podium with your like your teammates and you've got the gold medal and you're you're picturing the game and you're doing all of this visualization around like where you're going to be after the 60 minutes and to not be there and I remember us standing on the um like number two on the podium like everyone was just crying like bawling and I remember standing there being like I should be really grateful for being in this which I've got a silver medal at a world cup like that is amazing Mm. Kelsey you should be really proud of yourself you but don't it just, see it like that. You don't. You, you just know. feel like you've let an entire country down. I didn't want to check my phone because I was like, people are going to be coming at me. Oh, really? I didn't want to check Twitter. I didn't. I honestly just felt like I'd let every single person down. 
Um, and that feeling didn't go away for a really long time. Oh. <laughs> this is getting deep, but yeah, um, no, it's, yeah. yeah, it it was, and still to this day, when I get asked, like, "Oh, what's your biggest upset?" and people expect me to say, "Oh, my ACL," but no, like that loss at World Cup cut me yeah, deep. Yeah, yeah, um, it's, and it's not, it's not like a tournament that's every year as well. So you like, there's always that. Well, yeah, New Zealand is still the reigning champs from three years yeah, ago. That's why it sucks. Yeah, you gotta, yeah. You gotta wait. Same with them at the Olympics. You gotta wait four, four years, years for it to come around. <laughs> yeah. Fuck that. <laughs> yeah. So um, definitely the biggest, yeah, biggest thing that I had to overcome. Like, I came back to amazing family and friends who still love you. And that's when you realize, like, okay, well, it was a game of netball and it hurts, but, you know. You've yeah. got you've got people that love you still. <laughs> well, let's fingers crossed you get back to another one. Thank because you. Because <laughs> you're still very young and in the peak of your powers, as we've seen. But we've spoken a lot about Kelsey Brown. Now it's time to flip the shades and uh, oh, no. start talking about the alter ego, which is Chelsea. Get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, well, my friends call me Chelsea. Chelsea. <laughs> yeah, you do. You told me that too. Yeah, I'm going to call you Dippy Girl, there's but Chelsea, Chelsea or Dippy Girl. Yeah, this year, Chelsea has an alter ego. Let's just be let's just be real. You know what? The best way to sum it up is just go on her Instagram and then go on her TikTok. <laughs> And you'll see exactly <laughs> two different fucking people. <laughs> Seriously. It's well, ask my friends. They it's, like Chelsea so much better. Chelsea's, yeah, Chelsea's better. Do you yeah, reckon? Well, you start calling you Chelsea. So <laughs> actually, this is probably a, slightly a little bit more serious before we go into the, the life of Chelsea. But one thing I actually do appreciate, and we speak about it a lot on here, is like, um, like the mental health in athletes. Because... It's quite a challenging space when you're so focused on one thing. If things don't go well, you don't have other sort of releases around you because it's, you know, nepple, nepple, nepple. Um, but you're like, you're studying psychology. So, and I know that's like a, a space you've been sort of um, educating yourself on and going through your own things where you've had to like, you know, learn and deal with stuff through through hard challenges. But what's your perspective on, I guess, psychology because you're studying at one and, and some of your own experiences around sport in that space? Mental health, yeah. yeah. So mental health has been massive. And it's funny now, I feel like I'm on top of everything and I feel like the older you get, the better you get at recognising um, sort of like triggers or, um, but yeah, I had a really tough sort of 16 to 22 I'd say like on and off antidepressants and um just sort of like not really understanding what the fuck was going on yeah. in my brain there would be days that I would be like I cannot get up or I would just cry for days on end and I couldn't actually tell you why or I couldn't talk and for someone who's a big talker it was hard yeah, to actually larrikin. you're a bit of a larrikin <laughs> yeah but I actually think I developed like my alter egos <laughs> Almost around like trying to deal with. Really? Yeah. So I feel like my friends say it all the time. I have this ability to sort of like turn it on when I need to. And not that it's not authentic, but I know who I need to be at a particular time. And certain people. Yeah. And I guess the people, I feel like I am myself a lot of the time, um, but only like people really close to me have probably seen me um, like really flat or I just know what I sort of need to do and I feel like having an alter ego is actually like it's it's an easy way to sort of be like that's okay like this is oh, really? yeah does that actually help you yeah it does like um <laughs> what, what would Dippy girl do yeah. um, god you don't, I don't want to know the answer to some of those questions <laughs> no so uh yeah my mental health now I feel like I've got a completely different perspective on it I think my attitude has sort of changed and um there's yeah, I've got friends who have lost parents and so I feel like a lot of the time now I'm just very, uh, I feel like attitude's everything and, mm. um, yeah, the way you sort of look at a situation is going to impact how you feel about it. Uh, I did a lot of um, gratefulness stuff. I think you've had Jackie on this podcast. Yeah, I was just about to say. So Jackie's my to, psych. The amount of times <laughs> I've spoken to Jackie louder, I can probably count on two hands. Right. But the amount of quotes and like gems I can give you is like endless. Yes, yes. And one of the things she said, because I, I wanted to give you credit because obviously you've gone through your challenges, but you've actually like worked on your mental health. Oh, You know massively. how people like have mental health issues, but they don't actually work on it? No. I'm one of them at oh, times, right? right? Because I'm like bloke syndrome. Like yeah. You can't, I just trug through life, yeah. which I'm trying to change. But Jackie was like one of the things, like with specifically to athletes, which is what she works on, is like athletes are so conscious of working on their physical health and like their physical nature to their sport, but like no one really no. motors and works on the mental health. And the brain controls the physical aspect in it to a degree, right, She's when it comes to sport. She's taught me so many things. Like, and <clears throat> I guess her opinion or her 
philosophy on things has definitely helped me sort of like I find my mental space as important as my physical body at the moment. Like yeah. it, there is no way that I would be able to do what I do physically if I'm not, you know, she calls it like head and ass in the same place. Like you've got to get your head and ass in the same place. If they're not, if your head's somewhere else and you're trying to go out on court and play a solid game of netball, like what do you think is going to happen? Right. Um, head so, and ass. It's yeah. an unbelievable analogy. <laughs> <laughs> so head and ass in the same place and um, she was the one that when I was coming back from my ACL, I did a lot of work with her and still the quote to this day that if anyone asks me, oh, you know, how'd you get back on court after your ACL? I was like, well, my psych told me this. She's like, how many games have you played where you have done your ACL? And I was like, one. She's like, how many have you played where you haven't? And I was like, oh, yeah. Uh, like, fair Jackie, enough. Stop. Honestly, and after that, I was like, no, that makes sense. That's like, what so am I What am I scared of? I've done this one freak accident once. I've played probably 10,000 other games of netball where, you know, something hasn't gone wrong. What What am I so petrified about? Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think working on your mental health, I feel like there's still stigma around it, which I find, I find so strange. Cause I'm like, oh, it's just as, it's like going to the gym. Like yeah. you just go and talk to someone. I feel like everyone should have a therapist. Yeah. Like just yeah. go and talk to someone. And I've learned so much about myself through the way I handle situations. And there's so many things that I look back on, I'm like, oh, I would have handled that so differently if I was in the headspace that I was now right. relationships, um, uh, like losing team, like losing out on teams or um, friendship breakdowns or whatever. I just yeah. would have handled things so differently if I had have been working on my mental health. And oh, I yeah. feel like, yeah. yeah. And I feel like that was sort of 23 to 25. Okay. Um, and I'm so much better at dealing with situations now because I just find the way that you look at it is just. What are some of the, um like, what are some of your remedies? Because some of the things it's like prevention of yeah like, you know not so you, you don't do bad get stuck in bad habits so you get to that space mm. but what are some of like the things like your releases your sort of I forget what the terminology is here, yeah no you know no what I mean, right? well um I feel like recognizing it early enough is a big one for me I feel like if I say I say yes to everything so I'm like yeah I'll do it and then I get to it I'm like <laughs> I wish mm. I didn't say yes. So I feel like recognizing like, no, I know if it's not a hell yes, like it's a no. Oh, really? Yeah. Like if I'm making a decision on something and I'm not really passionate about it, I, it's like, it's a no for oh, me. So that I just simplifies life for you in a sense, Yeah. Right? And also I just know that if I'm going to get to that clinic or, um, appearance or something and I've already been like oh I don't know whether I want to do it I'm definitely going to get there on the day and be like I do not want to be here yeah um so I feel like I recognize things a lot earlier and don't put too much on my plate um because I just get stressed out but my biggest one is music like if I'm having a shit day I'll just go home and like jam out I'm so bad like I can't really play that well or whatever no I can't I honestly can't oh, no I can't right I'm biting my tongue here guys because I can't you are the songbird of your generation <laughs> no I'm not I feel you're, like if you're you like know a any... mixture of Fergie and Jesus <laughs> if you know anything about music you'll be like yeah she sucks no no but i find it so therapeutic yeah that's and, awesome um i've just found this i find thing. listening to music therapeutic yeah so yeah. i think it started as listening to it or like i would go for a walk and listen to my fav favorite music or whatever and then when it started to translate into okay well i could just like play this now um i don't know after i sing one song i honestly feel so much better i could have had the worst day i could be crying through this song and i'm like I i'm great well no because look this is you've segued into this beautiful no but, <laughs> no because i mean well, you don't have to play just now but essentially guys what we've organized is kelsey i'm not gonna lie here right so i've been on a tiktok live with kelsey as we've said <laughs> and when i've i think i've spoke to you before or you'd posted something of you playing piano and I was like, fuck, she sounds really good. Like the piano aspect. And then like five, 10 seconds in, you just started singing. And I'm like, holy <laughs> fuck. I'm like, she has, she has pipes, guys, like serious pipes. So we're on TikTok live and I was being a bit cheeky. I was like, because you, you were playing piano or sitting in front of your piano, I think, yeah. at the time. And I'm like, come on, Kelsey, just play us a song. And you're like, I get so nervous. You've, you've like li literally written your own songs and you play other people, like covers oh, of other yeah. songs. So like it's a yeah. legit thing. Anyway, well, I mean, <laughs> no, 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 well, I'm going to tell you why it's legit in a second, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. But anyway, she starts singing on this live and it was like, Holy fuck. I could even hear the people in the chat like silent at home. Do you know what I mean? It was so beautiful. And then we spoke the other week 
And believe it or not, you got a pretty amazing email, which I want you to share because oh, yeah. this kind of shows that you're actually not, you know, Joe Blows when it comes Terrible. to singing. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, I mean, I <clears throat> I just put that stuff out there because I like playing and um, I feel like, it's a therapeutic thing for me. And whenever I post anything on Instagram, people are always like, can you like send this to me via a voice memo so I can just listen to it on my own or like put it up on Spotify. And like, I will just never be able to do that because I'm not techni technically, technologically advanced. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so I just put it up on Instagram and weirdly, like I end up getting opportunities out of it, which is nice. I do feel sometimes like, obviously I've got a platform, so <laughs> you know, you're going to get opportunities out of things that you put up. And I feel bad for like musicians out there. I just do, I just do it as a bit of a fun thing. Yeah. Like a release. But yeah. A release. I mean, sometimes <clears throat> you take, you put yourself out there. I do. Happen. Yeah. And so, um, I got, I, I get like wedding requests all the time and I've actually done a few weddings. I'm going to do it. Um, I'm doing a wedding at the end in December, but the coolest one is I got, um, this message or email the other day. Um, asking like if I wanted to do play at Splendor and I honestly was like, are you joking? <laughs> that is ridiculous. I think, I don't know what the gig Splendor actually in the grass, is, but like, like in Splendor in the Grass. Like the Splendor in the Grass, you are going to potentially be playing. Are you going to play? Did you say yes? Well, I've said yes. I'm just still waiting on details, but like still the fact that that is even like a on the cards is, is unbelievable. Is this from like a couple of TikTok lives and Instagram or have you been actually like doing stuff on the side where it's like you, you no. people know you as this person? No, it's just on Instagram. And I feel like it's just, I've I, this for me is like, just put yourself out there. You might not be that, like, that's my lesson to people. I put yourself out there because I, I feel like I put myself out there for people to be like, okay, well, she's not very good. Or, mm. um, one of the people that I love the most that does this is Dale Finucane. Do you know? Yeah. Him? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he yeah, plays, he's gone, yeah. Gone to Cronulla, right? yeah. He's gone to Cronulla yeah. and, um, him and I were obviously living in the hub together. Um, Cooper Johns as well. We like would play. We'd have like little band meetings and That's like play crazy. together. Yeah, it was so much fun. <laughs> um, and he just like puts like him playing his guitar on social media all the time. And so I was like, do you know what? If fuck he's it. doing it, fuck, yeah, like just do it. And you might inspire someone to listen to it or pick up guitar or, you know, put themselves out there. So, yeah, to have opportunities coming out of it is kind of cool. It's and I don't want to cool. say no to things like have you um have you seen that scene in Anchorman where like they asked Ron Burgundy up on stage and he's like no I'm really not prepared and he pulls the flute out of his head <laughs> no I haven't oh, well. oh. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen I don't know if you can see this because I'm trying not to but I don't want <laughs> we to we came prepared <laughs> because I don't want to okay give it a hit <laughs> <laughs> now Kelsey everyone like I would send you to her social medias to check out the music but we thought we'd give you a little bit of a taste of it today. She has an amazing voice. Guitar isn't necessarily your no, strongest suite, my, but um, piano. Piano. But nonetheless, we're going to give it a go. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the annual Grammy Awards. Now, we've had a lot of awards and events and fun tonight, but we are going to cut to something that is much more heartfelt. Now, this is one of my favorite artists that I had come across. You will see her performing at Splendor in the Grass in Byron Bay over the coming months. And if you've ever had a broken heart, you're about to feel it now. Over to the one and only Dippy Girl. When you try your best, but you don't succeed. You get what you want, but know what you need. Feel so tired, but you cannot sleep. Stuck in reverse. When the tears come streaming down your face, when you lose something you can't replace. When you love someone, but it goes to waste. Could it be worse? Lights will guide you home and ignite your bones. I will try to fix you. <laughs> yes. 
Holy fuck, man. <laughs> it's seriously scary. I'm honestly, I'm like a bit taken back. I'm a bit taken back here. But ladies and gentlemen, obviously, is your, is your like, stage name going to be Diffy Girl? What's it going to be? Oh, Kelsey Brown? Know. It's still yet to be announced. No, we were just saying maybe Kelsey Brown's like... Nebula. Yeah. So, and you're like, F I'm Chelsea. <laughs> yeah, Chelsea. Chelsea's who I am. <laughs> Honestly, would you, would you take that seriously post career? Like, if it took off, like, you love it. Obviously, it's I'd a bit have of a... to get a lot better. Um, but I, I went to music college for like, I said before, like four seconds. And um, I met a really, really close friend of mine there. And she's like a fully fledged musician. And she's always said, whenever you finish netball, we're going to do an EP. And that's, we're just going to put it out there and see what happens. So I think she's really going to drive that. So I just, I think I just love to do one thing. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. I Thank you, by the way. Because <laughs> I know you're like, at first, you're like, no, nah, I don't want to. And I then, don't want to. yeah. <laughs> she did bring the guitar here, guys. So, like, I wasn't, didn't force I mean, I did kind of force it, but like, she brought I the guitar. I thought you would leave me at home if I didn't bring it. Yeah. You'd be like, oh, <laughs> yeah. you're not interesting outside of that. <laughs> no, no. Because I've heard you sing. That's why I wanted to share it on this platform. And this is the first time anyone's performed on this show. So, there we've broken go. new ground today. We, have. we continuously <laughs> just keep doing weird shit on this podcast. And it's just getting more freaky. Love that for you. Yeah, the van, who knows what's next. Braden, like seriously, <laughs> but um, to segue into just another topic because obviously your music career is blossoming, uh, blossoming, but dating now oh. we talk about this a lot oh. because <laughs> I, I had your ex, obviously Ryan Pappenhausen, on this show, and part of me sympathizes with you both because like I can't understand it or relate to it, but like. Your whole, like, it's funny because when I was researching you, I think I told you this, I typed in your name. Like the second thing was like Kelsey Brown and oh, yeah. Ryan Pappenhausen. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> just like dating in the spotlight mm. without going into obviously a relationship, but like, was that difficult? Oh yeah. Um, I feel like it takes- Even for this... him, I imagine, right? It would have been difficult too. Well, we met, um, it's weird to talk about, but we met like before he debuted um, and I had just moved to Collingwood, I'm pretty sure. Um, and so I literally have been, I was with him through his entire like rise to fame. Like he ended up winning a um, premiership and a Clive Churchill and yeah, um, superstar. we went on a, yeah. <laughs> and um, we went on a holiday and um, and honestly got stopped by every second person. I just remember thinking like, wow, you've got to be like a special kind of person to be cut out for this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, dating, dating in the spotlight is hard. I'm sure anyone who's, and I mean, I'm sure we look at ourselves and we're like, well, we're not that famous. You know, we're not like Bucks. In Melbourne. I'm not to, Bucks. Um, his, mullet, Becks. his mullet's more famous than like half a football team. Honestly. Like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it's it was hard. Beautiful. I think the the craziest thing, and like we've laughed about this, is that Storm really went hard on their marketing campaign after we broke up. <laughs> and honestly, like he was everywhere in Melbourne. <laughs> so I was no. like, I was driving to training one day and like turned to my right and I've got a video of it. And like there's Ryan's face like on the side of a tram. <laughs> and so I feel like that was like the weirdest thing was just oh, you've gone no. through this like public relationship, but then also like a, a relatively public breakup. Yeah, but and so then, that's the more of the, the probably the hard part. Yeah. Right? It's like when you're trying to move on or just get it, get past sort of certain situations, yeah. it's very hard. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but we're, like, and I've said this in so many interviews, like we're amicable, like no one did anything to each other. It just sort of ran its course. And, um, but yeah, it's definitely funny having him be like relatively famous and, um, on the side of tramps yeah, and like billboards. <laughs> like I was like, cool. Oh my God. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm single now and I have been for eight I months. I low key think you two might get married, but just <laughs> <laughs> perhaps. <No. laughs> He's a good looking fella. We anyway. could, it'd be an unlaced podcast wedding. Yeah, but we'd have you both on here <laughs> just to like talk about the men. Give me elopement. <laughs> yeah, just the, the journey. <laughs> no, um, yeah, so now it's sort of been like eight months single. Um, eight, no. I Has it know. changed your view? on dating after dating someone like obviously well you're you're quite well known in your own regard but obviously he's he's really well known from an NRL perspective um I think I just don't I think I enjoyed being in a relationship um and I probably wanted to be in relationships when I was younger because I felt like that I'm just kind of like an, a relationship person mm. but I feel like the last eight months have kind of taught me um how good it is when you are learning a bit more about yourself it's given me an opportunity to figure out who again who I am and I feel like that was another big turning point for me it's been like okay your life is not going to look how it was how you thought it was going to look for the last mm. you know three or four months um <clears throat> what does it look like now and um 
you become really like reliant on yourself and, you know, codependency sort of goes away. And um, I just do, I do so much alone now, which is cool. And yeah, like, I nice. love my own time. Um, and I just feel like, yeah, someone's going to have to be pretty special to um, sweep you off your Yeah, feet, to take me out of that, <laughs> to take me out of that like single looking after That's me. That's good. So you're dating face. yourself, as they pretty say. Pretty much. That's cool. I, she's all right. <laughs> <laughs> which, which, which alter ego are we talking yeah, about? DP's good. Chelsea's <laughs> yeah, <questionable>. toxic. <laughs> um, oh. Yeah, so it's like dating in Melbourne, though, is so funny. Oh, I, yeah, don't, I don't really date, yeah, but um, yeah. I, yeah, I went on to Hinge because I was like, oh, I think maybe I'm ready to go on to Hinge. I lasted like 20 hours. Like, no shit, 20 I hours. Do that. Nah. I, I had Tinder when I was like 20 and I went on like two dates and like 30 minutes or five minutes in, I was like, I can't, I can't wait to leave. I had someone message me and be like, oh, like, so I've just Googled you. <laughs> I was like, oh, they don't, no, they like, Googled don't. you. I was like, and that's when I got off because I was like, oh. That's too much. And I'm not even like, I'm so not famous at all. Like, I'm a, I'm no one. So like, yeah, imagine. you a good following. Yeah, but like, imagine someone then coming to you and being like, I've Googled you. Yeah, that's fucking creepy, <laughs> mate. That's rule number one. You don't yeah, say I was that, like, do, what? You. Um, do you? Reckon, um, do you reckon it's harder for athletes to deal with like heartbreak and stuff? I always, I think about it because you have so much downtime. Um, Do you know in like other careers you're always doing stuff? Yeah. In sport you, you work harder probably than anyone but yeah. in a shorter space of time. And I feel like your training and the intensity of it puts you in positions where you can be a little, more, a little bit more like emotional or vulnerable because like you're so tired at times. Yeah. That's when I found like the hardest was when I was like drained from training and then I'd be like emotionally drained as well. Yeah. Um, but I... People often say like, oh, athletes don't work together, but I found being with someone who understood what I was doing actually 100%. so much better. Yeah. Um, and like they sort of just got that you couldn't just you don't cancel need to training. Explain it. Yeah. yeah. You don't even need to explain <laughs> Or it. like, and I'm sure Ryan got so sick of this, but I would come home and be like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's different. Yeah, yeah, I'm on his side there. I don't understand that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's, um, but I feel like someone who understands like the pressures of it and like probably what happens behind closed doors of an elite um, sporting team, um, that made it, yeah easier but yeah dating i just don't really do it now yeah i'm just quite i'm just quite happy alone maybe i need to get like a date therapist on here because it's a common theme between all my guests it's oh like, really we all struggle to date i'm uh, hand, i'm included yeah i but, just couldn't i could like you could not ask me to go out for dinner with someone like what yeah like what i have to i learn about you again? how are we talking what are we talking that? about <laughs> and also like i don't want to talk about myself like yeah. i would rather just talk about or hear about you but then also i'm probably not interested yeah so. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Um, yeah, so that's me at the moment. Oh, dating, dating myself. <laughs> dating yourself. Well, Kelsey, Chelsea Brown, Dippy Girl. Honestly, it's been an absolute pleasure. I've always wanted to get you on this platform since we've known each other because I knew you were a character. Um, but you, yeah, for people that don't see you on the court over the next few weeks in the finals, you can see her at Splendor. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be fucking there. I actually might even go there. That's so fucked, isn't it? Like, you're playing in Splendor, bro. Yeah, like, but I'm like, I don't know. I honestly need to figure out what the gig is. Imagine if you yeah. come and it's like, oh, you're in the kids' show. Yeah. You're in the kitchen? The, kitchen. <laughs> the chefs need music. It's a long day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, it would be cool. Like, I just think, I think my biggest thing this year, especially, um, dating myself or you know being alone is sort of like you've got to say yes to things and I'm just saying yes to every single opportunity so well, I'm excited for what's ahead good on you well you're the first netball on this show so that makes me a Collingwood Magpies fan not, not that you gave me a choice Goodbyes. but uh, good luck for the finals <laughs> and you. thank you for coming on thanks for having me it was a blast <laughs>